back down at Powers, and we're going to be working on uh, Project Sleepy with Zach. And right. what is the plan today? You've taken the carpet out. I haven't taken anything out yet. Oh. But yeah, we need to... Um... Oh, is that just a boot carpet? Oh, yes, it's oh. a boot carpet, yeah. Yeah, no, we're just going to um, take the front carpet out and start laying down some of the sound deadening that I've got for it. So, so it's going to be yeah. just like a Bentley when you drive it around. Try to get some of the... Luxurious quietness. Try to some of the harsh engine vibration to come through. But is that that's true because you've got fiber technic mounts on it and stuff? Yeah. Is it the sticky back? stuff that you've got to lay down yeah okay oh and we're also right. going to look at the toys that you've bought for it mm. here's a new box of toys new box of toys which is all in there wow it's a big box how big's the ecd big yeah yeah so this is from uh clark yeah that's it ignition yeah, advantages mate all the toys so yeah this is the new electric pedal Fly by wire. Fly by wire. These are all the sensors. And and this is the race ECU. Yeah. Spec ECU. That's the additional wiring room. What's in the box? Is that like uh, relays, relays and stuff? Users. Some of that. Yeah, so that all comes free wired. Neat. So that'll do like fuel, fuel pumps, fans. Yeah. You plug that into the ECU. There's like a section of the ECU loop, you flying loop that you plug that into, and then you've got basically all your lives for everything Sick. already all pre wired. And you run the starter motor wires for it as well. So you cut into the ignition, run the key through that and through the ECU, and then you can start and stop it from the from your from like your dash app. display yeah from your, app. <laughs> from your phone yeah because this is the ecu that i've seen people like you can mm. basically pair it with a app on your phone and your tablet and i've seen people like running doing burnouts off their ipad like outside the yeah. car you can control it's crazy what you can control for it yeah this is the, oh, yeah, the actual ecu itself so yeah, nice. That is a big beam. unit. Yeah, it's quite weighty as well. Heavy is good. Yeah. Sign of reliability. And you've got your little Bluetooth aerial that screws in the front. What? Yeah. Mate, this is this is proper. And it looks like it's fresh out of the 80s as well, which I yeah. like. Yeah. And you've got inbuilt map sensor, which comes with either a pip to like a barbed thing, or um, you just run like a solid line and yeah, self sealing. Yeah. What's the bar? How many bar is that? I think, do, I think it's four bars, so I think oh. it'll do three bar boost. Yeah, and then obviously you've got all the flying loom. Everything's this, labelled. I bet you're dreading. This. No, it's really not that bad. If you look closely on all the wires, the wires tell you everything. Not that I know what that is, but it all makes sense when you read it. But yeah, like, it's all pre-wired. And so I did see that the ones that uh, Clark's been playing around with on the van that he's turboed, the diagrams are like the most clear. Yeah and concise yeah. wiring diagrams I think I've ever seen. Mm. And it's all long enough, so you just have to like, you just trim it down basically, and then work out lives and stuff. Yeah, the so. EGT. Yeah, it's got eight EGT ports, wide band directly into it. This is like. Mate. So this is all the sensors I bought. So yeah, four EGT sensors with the welding bosses. That's awesome. Um, what's that? Oh yeah, there's the, uh, so that's gonna be an oil pressure sensor. Uh, that should be another one of them. Yeah, there you go. So you're gonna have oil pressure and fuel pressure sensors. Air temp sensor with fancy boss. Uh, they're plugs, they need to go in the plug bag, wherever the plug bag is. Are you gonna weld that in the boost pipe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got rear wheel speed sensor for traction control. Are there the bosses for them? Did Cooler you say you could, sensor. with the um, fly-by-wire pedal, you can also do cruise control on this? Mm. Look. Yes, yeah, so you need to wire up a brake pedal Luxury. switch and a clutch pedal switch. And then again, you do it all through the, um, the M-Dash app. What's the, what's the pedal off? <clears throat> I don't know, to be honest. This is like a standard Volkswagen-y pedal. Mate, this is going to be... Yeah. So then I've got Crazy. and then yeah, uh, eight you can do boost seats. by gear. Yep. Launch control. Traction control. Traction control. Rolling launch control. Right. So driving down a motorway, like do you cruising. have to put a speed sensor on the back wheel as well. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what that one is. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's a reference, and then I'll use the gearbox speed as the front wheel refer reference. Wait, this is proper. Yeah. So yeah, inbuilt wideband. So we're all closed loop fueling. 
big bad boy injectors. Should see me to more power than I will need to run. What size are they, do you remember? 790s. So they should be good to over 450 horsepower. Exactly what this car needs. <laughs> exactly. And you've got a new fuel pump as well? Yeah. Treat yourself. So yeah, I bought from um, Steve at Circle Motorsport. I've gone for the AEM fuel pump. Oh, nice. And AEM 400 litre per hour fuel pump. Nice. So I've been using Cytec stuff for years. It's sort of, it's good stuff, but this is next level. Yeah. This, this, stuff, looks, this stuff looks like it came off uh, the space station. That's a nice little uh, doohickey. Ultimately, this car is a road car. I want it to be as reliable, as usable as possible. You still daily in it pretty much, aren't you? Yeah, I do still daily in it, so. Like a boss. What's in here? This is not. Ah, this okay. is going to be the display. <laughs> I know what this is. So yeah, most people like can run the ECU with the heads up, all of the gauges and they, you, yeah, can, they you can all run control stuff, can't you? Yeah, they all run it on. Most people run it on a tablet. Yeah. So you and clip a tablet like in your dashboard yeah. somewhere. But the but issue with that, that Zach pointed out, is that you've got to turn the tablet on every time and plug it in. Mm. Well, you could leave it plugged in, I suppose. But it's like a separate thing to the car. It's something you've got to worry about. Yeah. So keep it charged up and all yeah. that. It's a separate battery to the car. So I've got 60 pounds worth of China's finest um, double dim display head unit, which is a. Uh, so this Android. is like Bluetooth connectivity, yeah, Bluetooth, radio. Android. You plug it in, download the M Dash app. Um, apparently the sound quality is terrible, but I don't need it for the sound quality. I just need it for the display. But that'll replace the monster taco yeah. and sit on the shelf ah, over so there. You're gonna put that kind of like put that kind of like in here. Yeah, so yeah, it will be I'll, I'll literally get rid of this and I'll make a little mount that will sit in that nice. little area and then yeah, that will sit there. And then you've still got yeah. And then I'm gonna build a proper display as well. Still got with a speedo that there. actually works. That is the plan. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah man. Nice. So yeah, what are we doing today? Just putting some down dimming in. Yeah. Cool. Package all this back up again. <laughs> and the other this thing is for another well, day. So, um, yeah, didn't realise it comes with a rear view camera as well, so. Oh, mate. Just, I feel like it'd be a shame not to wire it just in. like a Bentley. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. How much was that? 60 quid. I don't know how they make shit. I oh, know, it's mental, isn't it? For that sort of money. Yeah. And there's GPS receiver as well for it, so I presume it'll do speed and um, a GPS, like sat nav and stuff. So, yeah, this is just my my hoarding parts. Yeah, this is a definite treat yourself situation right here. Yeah. Uh, Zach's gonna run through that ECU. It'll control the VVT, won't it? Yes. So, so yeah, the only downside to that is you've got to have the big bollock pulley back on the, uh, on the engine, but it'll help it with the squalling and response. And now you're making a new inlet for it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you got the bits for that here? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this will be uh, this will be removed. So this is another project for the Escort. So I had to change the throttle body flange on my current inlet to run the drive by wire throttle body. Is that off? Is that a, it's a, a ST? Port. No, 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 no. That was I got that cheap because somebody had bolted it to a Focus ST and somebody was always breaking it and they thought it was a standard ST one, but it's actually the Porsche. It's like 69 millimeters inside Dynar. Nice. So yeah. So and that'll, that'll run, you can just plug that in and then the yep. thing will control it. Can they you do like anti-lag with the, yep. the, oh mate. That's how you control mate. it. That's how you, it controls everything. Launch control, anti-lag, all your cold start. They're just like a world away from using a cable. Yeah, man. Proper bringing it into the future. And then you've got all these fancy bits. Yeah, so a lot of this is, um, LPS, LPS fab yeah. from America. So he does the two piece runners, which are all formed as, um, that's how you get them. They're nice. So yeah. they go from They're oval big. to like big boy hole. Yeah. And then you have to sort of just trim them down to size. Conveniently, he does a one size base plate and it's the same port spacing as the Zeta. So yeah, that's the first, that's the first one I've actually trimmed. So you kind of trim them up the diagonal to narrow them. I've done with that. I had to 
it slightly shape the ends to get it to better match the um, Z-Tech port. And then, yeah. Again, it will be welded inside and out, fully ported. How many injectors are you just running four injectors? Yeah, just running four injectors, I don't need eight. And then, but yeah, I'm going for a super like shallow plenum on this. So again, these are like half spheres you get from LPS fab on the end like that. Just like that. Just like that. And then, yeah, just run the and tone. Then, and then you're going to do, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be a tapered dual plenum yeah. on top. Would you have I'm a major? Fine, no, that's fair enough. Mate, this is going to look awesome. Yeah. Especially with the really long long runners on it. Yeah, I've worked out I can get literally that full length then. And have you got a flange for it? Hell yeah. So, yeah, I've gone for the Dan ST engineering um, billet for CNC flange. Like Gucci. I do with all of my inlet manifolds now. Yes, mate. So, yeah. It just makes fabrication a lot easier because you don't look. have to worry about injector boards. Yeah, they look they pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> They've got fuel rail mounts. So it doesn't drill them out? You got to, you still no, drill them? No, I can get them drilled out if I want to. But that's um, like a little pilot. Yeah. But yeah, once you, when you're welding oh, for, the, the for the rail? Yeah. Fuel yeah. rail, oh nice. But yeah, when you're welding around the top, it sort of like falls into the injector board. So, yeah. so I buy mine like that, weld them, then drill the injector. Smart. Do this as well. Yeah, man. And then there's the throttle body flange. It's yeah. handmade with a yeah. hole saw. <laughs> I don't know how you hole saw that. Really? Like neat. I've sort of like Fetched nice it. new fresh hole saws cut really pretty well. I mean, it's yeah, I bought a 70 mil hole saw. It's probably about 71 and a half, 72 mil. Um, how did, yeah. you, did you do this on the lathe? Yeah, so it was a 15 mil plate and I took five mil off of it to leave a spigot to weld to. Oh. So instead of welding a pipe directly to the flange, heating the flange up and pulling all the sides around, I can weld the pipe to the spigot, yeah. um, which should save a lot of effort welding to the flange, weld it inside and out, pull it out. Nice. Nice. Mate, it's gonna look mm. savage, next level. And it completely unneeded because the inlet you've got on there at the moment is probably... It's actually really good, yeah. <laughs> Something to do. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, hopefully this is, the inlets I've got, it's just big straight runners. Hopefully this being like big tapered runners. They're a lot longer. I think they're about. So this will help like with low down torque? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully a bit of mid range low down torque mm -hmm. without really sacrificing top end. And the smaller the plenums are a lot smaller. I think the plenums two and a half or three liters maybe. Yeah. So, so that'll hopefully that will yeah, yeah. make it a bit more responsive, make it a bit more drivable. Yeah, if it doesn't make it more drivable, really, if I keep saying I want a drivable streetcar, I should put a Rover inlet on it, because <laughs> they actually drive amazingly well, but who but wants a Rover inlet when you can, Gucci's, yeah, you can make stuff like this. The uh, catch can that you've made for yourself, <laughs> that's nice. Is that all internally baffled, yeah, yeah, top yeah. secret yeah. baffles? So yeah, that was Bought a bead roller and that's the first attempt. Again, buying the nicest bits I can find, proper can in breather filter. Yeah, well, can you um, notice that? Decent long Torx A and 10 fittings and yeah, the, uh, the pressed shaped end caps are from Turn 12 Fabrications and Ben Gilbert. Nice. Yeah, that looks proper. You just got to put a bracket on it. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure how I was going to mount it, so I did wrap it. To be finished. So these are actually like customers. Yeah, this is a customer in there. So this is for um, a fella called Terry Moore, who's got a pretty crazy like rocket bunny kitted Mark Six Escort van. I know, is I it? The one, yeah. Is yeah. it great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, so yeah, he's now trying to uh, get the power to match the looks. So yeah, I've got a building an inlet manifold off of the original RS2000 like base plate. Wow, is it chain driven? Yeah, 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 so it needs porting inside where it meets the flange. But and then you get the like a big top tapered box. Yeah. Sweet. And then yeah, this is, uh, so yeah, this was originally side feed injectors. Oh, that's what you turn, you turn yeah. those little... So again, I've had to make some little bungs, some little O-ring bungs that just slip in there. New fuel rail with some fuel rail mounts and... Uh, there you go. Yeah. Little wider speed control valve takeoff as well. Smart. 
just going to whip the seats out, take the carpet out, and then we'll start laying down the sound deadening. I never realised Zach Poo was running a, a subwoofer. Yeah, well, you got to have all the tunes, didn't you? Yeah, all of the creature comforts. Yeah. This was like is it bol You bolted it down? It's I think it's just Velcroed down. Okay, yeah, yeah. Proper install. But yeah, this is a focal underseat subwoofer. It weighs a ton. It is um, generally regarded as being the best underseat subwoofer you can buy. Yeah, that's pretty neat. And, and it does, it sounds really good. And I've got focal mids and tweeters in the front as well. Has that got built in amp in it? Mm. And gets all built in. The really good thing about this, not that I use it, but if you've got a like a normal head unit with standard ISO connectors, yeah, you actually get connectors that you don't need an amp wiring kit. You can literally wire it directly into your standard head unit. Well, and it pulls the power. And it will pull power, oh, cool. all the um, takes all the speaker outputs from it and everything. But it doesn't sound a hundred percent. I have run it like that when I first got now it. Now you've got it. Yeah, I've actually action. got a proper wired in amp kit, and um, it does sound a lot better. It's just under like the heavy bass and the heavy load it just sort of struggled, struggled yeah yeah nice um, but yeah it sounds really good it's like yeah it's fucking mint <laughs> so you got the seats out we're just gonna probably have to take the gear selector out and then start no i think i cut a big enough hole in the car really just slide around here. Here. these will have to come out though won't <laughs> yeah, they yeah i've got this oh, side out already okay, yeah. well ahead of the game i should probably bring it back far enough though Serious stainage. So yeah, it's not really a lot of sound dead in there, is it? Would you? Are you just gonna lift this, put the new stuff down, and then lay that on top? Yeah, I'll probably put this back on top. Yeah. Double bubble. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do? I think if we take this out, we lay this area, see how much we got left, and then maybe try and get the stuff off the bulkhead as well. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is. I think this is probably the most important because there's literally like nothing really under here. No. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got 20 sheets of it, I think. Oh, you can do all the outside as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do the roof. Do the headlights. The bonnet. Yeah. Have you got something to clean? Yeah, I've got some brake cleaner. I don't know, I feel like I should probably, probably move the gear selector as well. I'll go over the tower. Mm. Wait, it's four bolts. Yeah, but it's four bolts with loose nuts on the other <gasps> side. <laughs> 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 Well, you can climb under with this little spanner and yeah. spin them off the top. What size are they? M8? Yeah. You're not got an M8 rib nut? I don't know. I have a feeling there's a reason why you can't rib nut it, but we might be able to. We'll get it off and have a look. We'll okay. have to strap one side off. Right. It'd be nice to actually try and raise the tower up slightly. Yeah, man. You want it like mine. You want it like, like up here. Yeah. Like a, a Model T rat yeah. rod. Yeah, that's what you want. No, I keep looking at the thingy relievers. The um, proper Gucci ones. Yeah, fuck it, oh, why? CEAs? Yeah. Yeah, they're probably. They're like Gucci. all billet. They're which like, will literally just do exactly the same as this, but just look like it's out of a spaceship. Yeah. And the, and the gear throws like half. Yeah. Yeah, I might see if I've got something we can space up with if we're going to take it out. Yeah, tubes. Which one are you on? Is there a reason why you can't put um, rib nuts on it? Uh, I don't know, we'll have to put it out. So. Right. Next one. Is that one done? Yeah. All in the preparation. Luxury. Initiate. Look at that. Now it looks like something out of the space, yeah. space station. Hopefully this stuff makes a big difference. Just trying to like, oh, just continuing with the like, the modernization of it all. Well, not modernization, but it's just trying to make it a little More. bit nicer. I'm getting old, aren't I? <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't be putting this carpet back in. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone this stuff. Yeah, this, this weighs a bit. You're gonna have to turn the boost up to compensate. Yeah. Well, the gearboxes are in killed it, so. Oh, what well, the ratios yeah. and the weight. I'd laugh so much if it made it louder. <laughs> <laughs> it just stuff's getting more tricky to lay the further on you get. Starting to 
actually feel like if you tap the bottom of the floor, it sounds completely different. Does that like a tin can? Mm. Imagine you're running here in this thing. Imagine you're running gear in this thing. <laughs> What's the chassis uh, based on? Do you know? Is it just all like, custom? Far too jazzy. Looks good though. You reckon that sounds different when you punch the bottom of the floor? Yeah, it sounds like it feels like proper solid. I don't know. Well, maybe a little bit to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna put this old manky stuff back in. Carpet gone back in, bits of trim, 10 tons of wiring, the old subwoofer, just gonna put the seats back in. And then what do you wanna do? Take it around the block. See if it's made any difference. Yeah man. Oh we need to bolt the selector down, make some little spaces up, raise it up a bit. Make up some spaces for the gear shift tower. Drilling on a lathe is just so satisfying. Everything on a lathe is just so satisfying. I'm just going to put these spaces under here, lift this up a bit to find some longer bolts. Screw it all up. Just going to take it around the block and see if it's made any difference. Any better? Okay. Even just cranking over it don't sound as loud. It sounds loud from out here. so it won't come out. Have they made any difference? Yeah, I think so. You're going to say that anyway because the amount of money and time you just spent on it. No, it is definitely like it'll some be, of the It'll bike. be more noticeable I think on the motorway as well with like the road noise. Even like you can, it's less, there's a lot less vibrations coming through from everything. Cool. I'll do a quick, I'll, do, I'll go out for a proper drive later and do a report. Yeah, but I mean, it's quiet, it's really quiet in there. There's yeah. definitely not as much like engine noise coming through the bowl. We're not shouting as much as we usually do. No. Cool. Alright, well, that's it. Sick! Sick! Nice one. I'm gonna have to bust the groove. Yeah, I know. Mm. Like tiny little paper cuts all over the place. <laughs> I'll order some with a right leg bolt as well. I would, because that's gonna do my OCD and yeah. the uh, odd bolts that we've used to bolt down the gear selector. Is that? Oh, yeah, so you've got two 13 mils, a 10 mil, and an Allen key. <laughs> cool. Well, that's it for another video. Until next time, I'll catch up with you guys later. Take it easy. Yeah.